Good day to you one and all, it is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides again. I'm really excited because I've just become aware of a, a brand new indie band called Lovejoy. Um, and as an enthusiast of the television series Lovejoy, which featured uh, crime-fighting antique enthusiast... Um, who was it? What was it? It wasn't Michael Elphick, was it? Who was the other one? Um, it'll come to me. Anyway... I love Lovejoy, so I'm excited about this band because they're named after my favourite antiques-driven uh, crime-fighting... Uh, I don't know what it is, actually. Um, the song's called Call Me What You Like, and it's out on the 10th of February, so nice one. Justin Hawkins writes again, doing stuff about me. So, Lovejoy is an indie rock band based in Brighton. A lot of the indie rock comes from Brighton, doesn't it? Um, there's a, a music school down there that... Uh, I think one of the modules that they force people to study is indie rock. Um, they debuted on uh, May the 9th, 2021 with their EP, Are You All Right? When you hear those words, it always makes me cry. Are you all right? No, no I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Um, in May 21, they debuted on the Billboard Emerging Artists chart at number 10. Can you believe that? Is that in America or something? I don't know. Um, they seem to be very popular on YouTube, and this song has nearly 1 million views. Sorry. This song has nearly one million views in just over a day um, after the release, and they have uh, 1.3 million, sorry, 1.3 million subscribers. They are new, and there isn't much information available about them, so let's have a little look at uh, Lovejoy singing, Call Me What You Like. She never felt that safe in her own head. We both hate the news. That for the grace of God goes you. Okay. There, that's an interesting phrase, isn't it? There for the grace of God goes you. I used to think it was there but for the grace of God go I, meaning, thank goodness, uh, and the divine creator indeed, um, that I do not have to suffer the same fate as the person that I'm referring to. Um, there for the grace of God goes you is a bastardization of that expression, but it's also flipped it round, so there for the grace of God goes you. What does that mean? Therefore, there, for the grace of God, goes you. There, that means destiny has taken the female protagonist, of whom he speaks, into some, into the land of milk and honey. No, that is, or is that a different kind of mythology? Who, I don't know what's going on. We wonder if we took it too far, both taste confused. What makes this indie rock is the way that, that vocal is treated. Um, really sounds like it's going through a dodgy PA, but what they've done, I think, is uh, it's saturated it a little bit, compressed it a lot, and put a slap back delay on it. It's just not even a whole second of, of echo after the thing, which sounds like you're, you know, singing in the 50s, I suppose. So the first one is a C minor. Uh, the, the riff incorporates the root and then the minor third and the fourth and the same thing happens on the F chord but it's an F major so you've got the they're hitting the root and then they're pulling out the major third and suspending it and augmenting it whatever it is I'm not sure I don't know about the terminology but you, you see what I'm doing my fingers that's the interesting part. When it goes to G sharp, it has the uh, major third, and then that's the nobody does it better note. It's actually the Diablo from the from the root. And then they pedal with this remaining on the, uh, what's that? That's the major third of the A sharp. So it goes to B. Uh, so it goes from uh, B flat major to B minor. And um, the way they do that is a bit of note holding here to use an old, uh, you know, old voice holding, isn't it called? That? I learned that recently. It's uh, an orchestral technique where you stay on and that note glides across the, the two final bits. It's actually a, quite a clever bit of interval work. Um, 
which betrays something. I think that's probably suggests to me that they did attend that that music college. This is indie rock jazz. <laughs> this is indie rock. Yes, this is. I mean, that doom, do, 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 do. I mean, the chorus it just sort of opens up. Um, like there's a period of blurs oeuvre that sounds a bit like that, isn't it? Like um, it just. Um, it's melodic and nice, isn't it? Not much else to say about it, really. But when the second verse starts off, it's like do 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 indie music. Do 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 do. This is decidedly indie. Uh, that's not even a criticism necessarily, but it's an observation. So I find myself in your mum's bedroom. Oh, and then that lovely verse riff comes back in. And you hear that bit there where it goes doom, doom, doo, 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 doo. It's really got a Maniskin vibe to it, hasn't it? A lot of their recent sort of up-tempo stuff has that arrangement where the, the bass, or the, well, the drum is just going doo, 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 on the kick drum. And then the riff's uh, doing something that's like what the White Stripes would be doing if they were still trying to reimagine <laughs> Seven Nation Army. Which, of course, they're not doing that because uh, they've moved on. But evidently, not everybody has. That's not a criticism, but it's an observation. Why do I keep saying that? Please don't slag me off, guys. This Justin. Huh? This Justin. No. Uh, uh, don't know. I did think that there was something else in the instrumentation that reminded me of Fontaine's DC, you know, that band from Ireland that uh, do sort of, sort of very much poetry-based sort of indie rock. And this sort of dramatic monologue bit in the middle is um, alluding further to that. Um, I like it. I like it when there's a dramatic monologue in a song. People should do that more, really. I mean, it's not rapping and it's not just talking. There's something in between. Rawking. I think they've really le lent into the uh, production value of this uh, this video, and it sort of and it really just um, makes the the obvious peril that the protagonists uh, protagonist is in uh, much more easier to come to terms with, and because it's very obviously not real. Oh, maybe that's the whole point. Maybe that's the whole point. Or maybe not. I'm just going to show you how people used to dance to this type of music um, in indie clubs in the olden days. Uh, <clears throat> my my dear friend, the preeminent uh, Irish journalist Pat Carty, will attest to this as well. This is how you do it. Look up. Sorry. <laughs> nice ending. All right, cool. So that is indie rock, isn't it? Definitely got a bit of a sort of late nineties vibe about it. Sort of, I would call that post Brit pop or even neo Brit pop. Maybe it's that. Could that be a thing now, guys? I'm gonna try and make the most. Hair look indie for, for this thing. So. Indie. Is that right? So why am I teasing indie? I, I love indie. Just in audience right again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and check out Lovejoy, not the television series featuring what was his name? Come on, Lovejoy. I'm going to have to look it up. It's that actor who did a lot of other cool stuff as well. What's his name? He's in Deadwood. I mean, I can't even remember some of the incidental characters. Like if Lovejoy's um, long-suffering partner was uh, not, you know, business partner rather, um, was um, oh, it auto corrected to lovely actor. I don't want to be. I don't want my um, Ian McShane. That's who it was. Um, yeah, and then his 
partner Tinker used to drive around in the Morris Minor looking for antiques with a, a, a sort of waistcoat on that, that looked like he might use it for fly fishing. Um, again. Cheers. <laughs> 